participants, the students, uh, faculty members, and the invited guests. So thank you uh, for joining in this uh, August occasion of uh, a webinar, which we are organizing in a serious way. So today the topic is, and uh, we have started with the uh, research-oriented topic, or that is uh, science-oriented topic. Earlier we had career or uh, pharmacy practice related uh, topic. So the aim of this topic is many of the B pharmacy students who are uh, interested in the research. So by attending such a seminars, so it may inspire the students. So with all the uh, participants, I request this as one of the inspiring uh, lectures. By attending this type of uh, research-oriented topics, the students who wish to uh, continue their career in the MPharm, the PhD, and those who are already in post-graduation who wish to continue their uh, research work, it may be one of the inspiring lectures. So with this mindset, uh, we invited uh, Dr. Morali. He has readily accepted our invitation without any hesitation. So thank you, Dr. Morali, for accepting our invitation and sparing your valuable time. And this uh, juncture, I thank our uh, management, uh, Sri M. N. Rajgaru, and mm -hmm. our uh, Vice Chairman, Sri Ravi Varmargaru. They always uh, yeah, very big boost to do all sort of these uh, activities, which will enrich the knowledge of the students and faculty members. I thank all the fac uh, faculty, student members, and all the participants, and I welcome you all to this uh, uh, gathering. Now I request Dr. Saranan, Professor of Pharmaceutical Chemistry to uh, introduce the speaker and say a few words about the today's second. Dr. Saranan, sir, you can continue. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the MNR College of Pharmacy, I wholeheartedly welcome that all the delegates for the international webinar on role of the brain's garbage men in the nose to brain transport of polymeric nanoparticles by a well-known resource person, Dr. K. Murali. And I'm very happy to introduce our college in front of these gatherings. So MNR College of Pharmacy is established in the year 2004. It is approved by Pharmacy Council of India and AACT. MNR College of Pharmacy is affiliated to Osmania University, Hyderabad. And we are offering the courses like B Pharmacy, Farm D, M Farm, and Farm D PB. And we have a state of art pharmaceutical laboratories. And we have a library with more than 10,000 volumes of specialized books. And we have subscription to many national and international journals. And we have a digital library facilities also for our students as well as faculties. More than 50 faculty members are working in our MNR College of Pharmacy. Among them, 20 faculties are with PhD. And the faculty members as well as the student teams are led by the well-known pharmaceutical chemistry member that is Dr. V. Alagar Swami, who is the convener and principal of MNR College of Pharmacy. And our principal is a recipient of Young Scientist Award from the DST India. And he published the many reputed books and the most important one is a textbook of medicinal chemistry by Dr. V. Alagar Swami. And he is the editor of Anti-Infective Agents and a well-known Bentham Science Journal. And along with that curricular activities, we are uh, encouraging our students for participating in co-curricular activities, such as attending conferences, guest lectures, and industrial visits. And we are also encouraging students to participate in the extracurricular activities, such as cultural and sports activities. And with the leadership of our chairman, sir, Sri Yaman Raju Garu, and with the support of our vice chairman, Sri Ravi Murma Garu, that we are taking on a special initiatives in our MNR College of Pharmacy for university training coaching, and we have on a placement facilities, and we are providing the students for a personality development, and we are giving a career counseling for our students, and we are coaching for a higher studies such as NAPAR, GAD, GPL, GOFAR, GRE, and IDES. And we are guiding our students for foreign university admissions also. And always our chairman, 
But the education the institution is the two eyes. So in that basis, we are providing a favorable environment for studies in our MNR College of Pharmacy. And in our campus, there is no distraction for studies. And individual care is taken for each and every student. And we are following SMS system for option A. And every month, a progress reports are also sent to the parents. And we are encouraging the student self-respect. And we are offering education with the less cost. And we are giving a fee concession for the meritorious students also. This small introduction about our college. Now I am happy to introduce the today's speaker to the audience. So the today's speaker is that Dr. Morali Kumara Sami. He is a pharmacist and he explores different disciplines of nanobiotechnology and neural cell biology. He combined his transatlantic ideas to initiate path in high reward entrepreneurship. So Dr. K. Murali completed his e pharmacy in the year 2005 in the Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University, Chennai. In the year 2008, he completed his PG degree in pharmaceutical chemistry background in the same university, Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University, Chennai. And he awarded his PhD in theoretical medicine in the year 2015 in the doctoral school of Semmelweis University, Hungary. And he undergoes a postdoctoral training in animal biotechnology career enhancement program in Tamil Nadu University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, India. And he got a postdoctoral fellowship in the Center of Nanotechnology, Indian Institute of Technology, Rurke, India. And if you are looking at his experience, so he started his career as a lecturer in the year 2008, and around two years he worked as a lecturer in TL Bay Metha College of Pharmacy, Chennai. Later he got an, a research fellow, fellowship in the uh, research group of uh, Professor Ciaro Sullivan of Nanobiotechnology and Bioanalysis Group in the University of Rovira Vilgiri Targana, Spain. And he done his research fellow in the topic of optimization of separation and isolation of circulating cell-free fetal DNA for non-invasive prenatal diagnosis. On basis of this research fellow, he got an opportunity to work in the Hungarian Academy of Science, where he joined the well-known European Commission in 2007, made the consortium for nano tasks, and he completed his doctoral thesis, which means investigator and interdisciplinary with neural stem and tissue type cells. And he's an uh, early stage researcher in the Mary Beery Fellowship. So in this fellowship, he visited and made short-time research at many universities and research institutes. And he visited Norway, Germany, Spain, Ireland, and Belgium on this Mary Beery Early Stage Research Fellowship. And after completion of his PhD, then he worked in Budapest University of Technology and Economics under the professor of Dr. Istvan Kumar and he worked on the magneto optical diagnosis of malaria. And Dr. Morali has around 13 years of research experience in this field. And yes, areas of research interest is the different novel nanodrug delivery system to target different biological barriers, including blood brain barriers, blood fluid barriers. He's holding a very prestigious fellow stage, such as many fellowships and National Institute of Health Fellowships. He published more than 30 well known international journal publications, and he's also having a few. So from 2017 hours, currently he is working in the Planning and Budget Council Fellowship by Israel Council for Higher Education. At present, that Morali is working as a senior researcher 
इन इसमें असफलता से दें इंटरनेशनल लेडर नेमल इंटरनेशनल जी आप अभी बोल रहे हैं आंगेस आंगेस रिसर्च केस क्रिएटिंग पर्सनलाइज्ड सुनिश्चित डेट इंटरनेट माइक्रो एंड नेमस्टर टेक्नोलॉजीज टू गेन द रेंज ऑफ एरोमास्टिक्स फॉर न्यू रीजनरेटिव रीजेस वाइस इज ब्रेकिंग विल गो टू वी लास्ट एंड दैट विल मोरली टू स्टार्ट द सेशन हां यस सर यस सर कंप्लीटेड सर सो विद दिस स्मॉल इंट्रोडक्शन आई एम हैप्पी टू वेलकम आवर स्पीकर डॉक्टर मोरली टू प्रेजेंट हिज वैल्यूएबल रिसर्च टू द ऑडियंस डॉक्टर मोरली नाउ द स्टेज इज योर्स प्लीज सर प्रोसीड Long, long back, um, uh, as I remember. Um, so, and thank once again. I thank for the for this kind invitation. I also thank uh, all the participants, and I I thank Amherst College of Pharmacy uh, for the for this for this kind invitation. Um, uh, a few days back, uh, Dr. Salamanan he contacted me to give a talk. So that, then immediately I thought of giving a nose to brain transport for uh, two reasons. One reason is uh, nose to brain is like one of the, the booming area of research, uh, especially to, to to deliver the drugs to the brain. And next thing, uh, you know, recently the coronavirus uh, is is is. Uh, is i think we are we are facing a uh, world is facing an unusual time i think because of coronavirus this coronavirus also spreading uh to not to blind and not to long actually so this, 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 these are the two reasons why i i chose this topic um so i i think i hope you're all safe in this pandemic uh, so today i'm going to talk about lo- role of the brain scavenging in the nose to brain transfer of polymeric nanoparticles actually uh, i think i think later of my presentation you you you'll understand why i kept this funny title brain scavenging um most of the men they ask why garbage men why not go with women actually okay, I'll, i'll explain you in the later of my presentation so let's um Talk about the snapshot of presentation. First, uh, we are going to talk about CNS disorders, like brain disorders, and biological barriers. What is present in the in the, the brain? What is, what is the obstacle we are facing as a researcher, and what kind of motivation actually to to do this kind of research? And next, I'm going to talk about the interaction of different polymeric nanoparticles with neuron neuron tissue type cells. And I'm also going to show some of the dancing videos of brain scavenging men. Um, Uh, and and finally uh, nano safety that's a very important i mean nanotoxicology because nanomedicine is not only the, the research point of even nanotoxicology also the research point of so these are the things i'm, I'm going to yeah. talk in the presentation Dr. yeah sir your voice is breaking sir i think uh, the the problem from your side because my internet is very good yeah now it's okay can you hear me telling like that hello uh, all our participants is also telling sir not only from my side sir so every uh, participants they are telling that why sir not clear that's why sir okay so i think now 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 it will be okay i suppose hello um murli yeah i'll continue maybe uh, maybe maybe later it will it will be okay i suppose okay okay, okay. yeah Now I can okay. experience. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, okay. So uh, these are the d- snapshot of the presentation I'm going to talk. Um, so first, uh, I'm going to talk about the central nervous system disorders. So what are the brain disorders? Uh, we we know uh, there are more than six hundred neurological disorders, but we know very few. Uh, for example, uh, neurodegeneration, uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, uh, amyotrophic I mean, lateral sclerosis, Huntington diseases. These are all concerned with neurodegeneration. There are some functional disorders like migraine, epilepsy, 
um, dizziness. Um, and, and the vascular disorders like stroke, which is, uh, which is uh, a very, very devastating disease in, in, uh, in the world, uh, as well as in India, uh, due to diabetes and high, high BP and hemorrhage. Um, structural disorders like brain and spi spinal cord injury due to accident or, or, or natural issues. And also brain tumors. And these are the neurological diseases um, still we are facing actually uh, in, in, in the humankind. So if you want to treat uh, those diseases, uh, particularly our drug molecules should cross this uh, brain's own security system, it's, which is called as blood-brain barrier. Uh, the, the, the sad truth is, you know, most of the small molecules and 100% of the large therapeutics cannot bypass this brain's own security system. Um, that's, that's the mystery still behind this. Uh, still, we are a neurocell biologist, neuro, neuroscience researchers. They are, they are still they are exploring this kind of research largely. Uh, so first thing, if I talk about the barriers, uh, the solute barriers, which is called cerebrospinal fluid, actually, I think as, as a family people, you, you, may, you may explore all these uh, all this terms, cerebrospinal fluid. The unique nature of cerebrospinal fluid is shortly called a CSF is formed at the rate of 0.5 ml per minute in your brain, uh, which is present in uh, two areas, like one is like the ventricles, the cryoplex of the ventricles, and, uh, and also in the subarachnoid space, actually, in two, uh, two places, this, this CSF is present. And its total volume is 200 ml, and every four, the another unique nature of this CSF is like every four hours once it will, it will replace, actually. So that, these are the unique nature. And researchers, they, they, they use this liquid to, to deliver a drug. Uh, there are some approaches to deliver a drug through CS fluid. And another important thing, uh, even it, it, this liquid is, is useful in, in diagnostic purpose also, because taking this liquid, analyzing, it gives a lot of information about the neurological disease, including tumor. So as I mentioned, like different barriers, one is that fluid barrier, which is called, you know, cerebrospinal fluid barrier. Uh, the choroid plexus, it, which is called epithelial cells, uh, the brain has two different types of cells. One is like endothelial cells, which are also barrier, and epithelial cells, which is called drugs. For example, and the old the previous method, conventional methods like a cerebrospinal fluid and on um, dialysis fiber, they are, these are the methods which should be used in vitro or, or uh, ex vivo to, to analyze the materials. And recently, detection of fluorescence particles, actually, this part I'm going to present now, mostly detection of fluorescence particles using a different microscopic system. And there is another in vitro models, uh, it's called the transfer uh, models. Uh, I don't know how many of you explored these things. 
which is an existing model actually uh, to test the nanoparticles or drugs in vitro. Because in vivo, in, in brine, um, it's, it's very difficult to, to, to understand the mechanisms. That's, that's why actually we are exploring in vitro uh, models. Um, so if we want to talk about the mechanism of uh, the, 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 the materials is crossing the blood-brain barrier, there are different mechanisms uh, behind this. The one mechanic, the, the different mechanism, one is like a diffusion based on the small molecules, like less than 400 kilodalton molecules. And paracellular transport, uh, as you can see, you know, it, it, it's, it crossed the, 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 it crossed the blood-brain barrier in between the cells and transport protein, actually. There are a lot of tight junction protein. Maybe you came across a lot of, a couple of names, cloudin, oclidin, zonoclidin. These are the transport proteins. Uh, it's available, tight junction proteins. And receptor media, I think a lot of research is going on in this particular area, receptor mediated transcriptors. Uh, even we are also working on a couple of ideas uh, using a peptides uh, or, or just bind the, the, the receptors on, onto the nanoparticle surfaces or drug, drug conjugates, antibodies. So a lot of research is going on on this particular area and adsorptive transcriptors is cells will adsorb your materials and it, it crosses the barrier. And efflux transporters, this, uh, this is the main reason for uh, drug resistance, actually. It's called uh, uh, ABC transporters. So these are the main reasons for, for, um, for, for, for um, the, the, the mechanism of drug transport into the brain. And there are different approaches uh, to deliver a drug into the CNS, the central nervous system. Uh, the current approaches, uh, there are like, the, I mean, these are the emergency approaches, which means like, the, like, you know, opening the skull or directly you're, you're introducing your, your compounds, the drug molecules into, into the brine. Um, so, for example, intracerebral implants, uh, it's uh, two decades or three decades uh, we are using this kind of methods. So, I mean, we open the skull of the brine and just, just we, are, we are placing uh, your, your drug materials uh, directly onto the, onto the brine. So this, but this method is really invasive, and you need a you need an expert, a lot of neurosurgeons or someone. And transient BBB, I mean, blood-brain barrier disruption uh, using some chemicals, so leak acid or such chemicals. We are using uh, this this kind of methods actually. And also intraventricular infusion, as I mentioned, cerebrospinal fluid, yeah. drugs uh, directly injected into this fluid and to 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 reach the brine. Uh, but recent days, uh, non-invasive, even my, my research goal also the same option. I want to work on, I like to work on like minimally invasive um, uh, approaches, like non-invasive approaches uh, without disturbing the patients, without pain, painless delivery. That's a very important, that's a target of uh, our future research. Um, for example, uh, uh, non-invasive one actually, there are a lot of methods are available, chemicals, biological methods, pro-drugs, drug conjugates, and uh, colloidal and drug nanocarriers actually. So th these, are the, these are the things I'm going to talk in my presentation today. Uh, also international actually, written rights, a um, uh, lot, of, lot of research is focusing on these particular aspects like international means like nose to brain transport of uh, the, the, the drugs or nanoparticles. This is this is based on two mechanisms. One is like olfactory and trigeminal nervous system because these two neurons is present in in, in, in our nose to, to brain. It connects the, the the outside surface to, to internal brain actually. So you can say, I think as a pharmacist, you are, you, you must know about the advantage of uh, non-invasive, advantage of international delivery, uh, particularly non-invasive. Uh, I would say uh, the painless uh, delivery, actually, this this uh, this method. And uh, what's hepatic spasmic metabolism? That's the main advantage of this this, uh, this, this delivery methods. And circumvent the blood brain barrier because if you inject to the intravenous, it should cross all the uh, all the barriers and it should cross the blood brain barrier. But but using a nose to brine, it's not even touching the blood brain barrier part. It directly goes to the brine actually through this these two pathways. Um, the previous literature precedent says uh, more efficient for nanoparticles is 100 to 300 nanometers, actually. So even in our research also, we are also using this, this, this range of nanoparticles. And as I mentioned, international delivery has emerged as a new approach to circumvent the blood-brain barrier and, and efficiently deliver the drugs into CNS to treat many, many, many disorders, actually. This is an area of research. 
and 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 um, while I'm talking about advantages, so uh, I should say about disadvantage of this method. Uh, as you know, human nose is like this. This nose nasal area is much much smaller actually, so you cannot deliver a drugs uh, like milligrams of drugs actually. So you can deliver very very few amounts of drugs. That's that's my disadvantage of, of this delivery method. Uh, before going to my presentation, I, I kept this unusual slide. Actually, I think uh, I don't know how many of you know the Nobel Prize uh, in Physiology Medicine in 2004, which was given to the olfactory system. That's the, that's the NASA system. Uh, they awarded to Professor Richard Axel and Professor Linda Bach. They, they both about, they they explored about the olfactory system, this nose to brain system, and they I think their discovery helps us to to identify. Uh, many, many uh, unraveled uh, themes, uh, for example, olfaction, like why smell is important, how smell is important. You're saying like eyes, actually, how you're looking at the, the world. So how you're smelling each chemicals and how it gives like different smells when you, when you, when you, when you smell, um, uh, when you, you know, inhale different chemicals, actually. And how the sensory system works and how it interacts with outside world, actually. And, Brian has no, no connection with the outside world. Actually, this is one, one system is connecting outside world, Brian with the outside world. So th this is a very unique system, olfactory system. As I mentioned, you know, um, it, it crossing the blood-brain barrier. I mean, the nose to brain is like one of the ideal, ideal method. Uh, but uh, distance-wise, it's smaller actually, but nose to brain is very, very, very small distance instead of using uh, intravenous. But uh, uh, this, uh, this olfactory region also is tightly packed system, actually. It has no extracellular spices. Uh, it has like an epithelial cells. It's called nasal epithelium, uh, olfactory neuroepithelium. Uh, it's a tight junction and, and mucus layer, actually, it, it present. And not only that, it, it has like a lot of supportive cells, uh, which is present in, in, in this region, actually, along with olfactory reception neurons. Always a factor receptor new. I mean, always neurons uh, will not be available in, in a single cell. It, it, it always is wrapped up with, with the different supportive cells like a glia cells actually in the CNS. So if you if I want to talk about sent neurons, it's um, you, you know neurons. We have billions of neurons actually connections in our body, and uh, neurons has the multiple glia connections. Um, and neural networks is dynamically changing. It's like one of the peculiar system and delicate system of connections. It's most most sensitive system in in our body. Our bodies are neurons actually. And, and the unique nature I'd like to share um, the, the olfactory epithelium has an extraordinary unique characteristics of undergoing continuous turnover throughout the lifetime of organism. Continuous turnover means here I'm talking about neurogenesis actually. I mean the, the adult neurons will die, uh, neuro, neuronal apoptosis and the new neurons will create all the times uh, until your death actually. Even recently, last year, the papers have been published in Nature. Uh, they, they explained about even at, at, at the age of 95, you know, the, the neurons uh, are generating actually. So that, that's a, that's the unique nature of our uh, our brain system, and particularly the olfactory region. Also, all the time neural sensors like neurogenesis is happening, and the lifetime of olfactory neurons is four to eight weeks actually. So after after four to eight weeks, uh, it, it it dies, and new new neurons will generate actually at this at this um, olfactory regions. And I kept uh, this slide also there, but, uh, but to give, uh, just to give an introduction about laser scan, uh, scanning uh, microscopy. Um, uh, because most of my research, I used a uh, confocal microscopy because I'm, you know, 10 years back I was working in the area of drug discovery, but afterwards I switched to different areas of nanobiotechnology. And my current area of focus on, on neural cell biology. Um, we have to use a microscope, a different microscope. You know, one of the microscopy is confocal, but we are also using advanced microscopic so, uh, like the super resolution storm and and uh, palm kind of microscopes actually, which is available. I think as far as I know, very few institutes in India they have such such kind of institute um, uh, instruments. If you want to talk about confocal, confocal resolution is 200, 250 nanometer. Less than this, you cannot see you know, through confocal. Uh, the main difference between the, the conventional fluorescent microscope and confocal. Murli sir, excuse me, Murli sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, sorry to sorry for the interruptions. 
so your voice are uh, breaking sir so if possible can you use a um, earphone sir okay okay just a okay. moment um. yeah i can i can use doc yeah just a moment I'm, I'm sorry for the interruption. Can you hear me now? Hello? Hello? Uh -huh. Can you hear me? Uh, sir, why is very low, sir? Oh, just a moment. I, I'll, 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 I'll increase the voice, actually. So, uh, not audible, sir? Yeah, now it's okay. Ah, uh, now it was somewhat okay, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I can choose. Uh, I think I, I hope it will be okay now. So I, uh, now the voice was clear, sir, but it was uh, less audible, sir. Uh, okay, so I will. Yeah. Because we are getting any comments that excellent presentation, but only thing is that voice was not clear like that many people. I understand. So, I understand. so that's why, okay. okay, I understand. So now, now I hope it will be okay. Ah, yes, sir. It's, it's in a hundred percent volume, actually. So, okay, 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 sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay, sir. Carry on. Sorry for the disturbance, sir. Yeah, it's okay. So, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry for this uh, interruption. Uh, I'm sorry, audience, for this uh, interruption. So, confocal, particularly, it's uh, the only difference between the conventional microscope and confocal. Confocal, it focuses on, on specific part of the samples, actually. In, in, a, in a conventional method, Conventional uh, microscope, it, 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 it spreads, light will spread, and it gives like a bloody images, actually. So that's why it's confocal, actually, you know. So the, the resolution is 200 to 250 nanometers, but there are other advanced microscopic techniques. Uh, uh, those resolutions are, are two to five nanometers. You can able to detect like two to five nanometer size um, particles or any any kind of information. Uh, I also kept this, this very basic um, um, uh, slide. Um, so cellular imaging, how we are imaging actually cells, you know, cells like 10 to 15 nanometer uh, micron size. So uh, the, the, the lens will, will focus cells and the confocal is mainly for the 2D, 2D cells types, so like, like this kind of cells actually. It will not penetrate um, more than a few microns. It penetrate up to certain microns and it, can, it will analyze, it will give information of the cells actually. So that's why we are getting uh, all, the, all the images. Um, uh, fluorescence images and sort of images actually. So these are very basics about microscopes. Um, and if I want to talk about the, the, I'm coming back to the main research point part actually, because I gave, I gave a lot of, I mean, kind of introductions about uh, uh, nervous system and what, what kind of cells present in the nervous system. Uh, uh, now I'm going to give a like, like some snapshot of my research actually we have done uh, why is garbage man what is a part of this and nose to brain transfer things so before i begin this research uh, i'd like to say some points actually previously i think this, this is the first report we we uh, we, we produced um, uh, isolated cells from the different different uh, particularly the, the olfactory tissues uh, and we performed with uh, with the different nano, nanoparticles actually. The previous research, a lot of people are working in the past two, three decades after the Nobel Prize winning uh, in the nose to brain transport, but mostly the people, they used uh, directly animal models actually. Using animal models, as I mentioned before, you cannot identify the mechanism of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of the diseases, particularly central nervous system. As you know, a brain is like a really complicated organ and with a lot of billions of neurons and a lot of information, still mysteries are going on actually around brain. Uh, so in order to understand the mechanisms, uh, the, the real uh, in vitro models are, are needed actually. So when we submitted the, the, the grant actually, we, we, we thought of using just some X5 models actually. But after after we, we approved the grant, we, we thought of uh, uh, exploring uh, the different cell types uh, because uh, based on my, my background, as you know, I'm, I'm a pharmacist. 
I worked in a pharmaceutical chemistry, like medicine chemistry, and I have also background of neural cell biology. Um, then I was discussing with, with my, my, my ex-boss from Technion, Estelle Institute of Technology, then why not we can, we can explore this actually. Then I was going, uh, going through the literatures, uh, particularly the interdisciplinary literatures. I, I couldn't find any information about the materials and, and this olfactory cells combinations actually. So then, then we decided to, to, to ex explore this, this aspect. So we thought it's, it's a novel and also uh, it gives a lot of information, um, just like you know, introducing the materials directly into, into, uh, into the animals and, and, and giving results. So we isolated uh, OE means olfactory epithelium, olfactory bulb, and brain part, actually, cortex part, different type of cells, and we, we use different specific antibodies, like specific biomarkers to identify uh, the tubulin, like, you know, neurons, the macrophages, uh, microglia, which is unique in, in, in your brain, actually, uh, then astroglia, then olfactory receptor neuron specific and microglia. So these are the cell types we, we isolated and, and we, we characterized thoroughly. First, I'm going to talk about the, the characterization part. Like, so far I discussed about how we isolated and now I'm going to talk about the characterization part, like how we isolated. Once, if you isolate cells, you know, it is like the same like a chemistry. Like if you synthesize the molecules, you, you're characterizing to know the structure of the molecules, right? In the same way, if you isolate the cells, you should characterize the cells using a different different techniques like immunostaining. Immunostaining means there are antibodies which is more specific, like biomarkers for, 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 for analyzing a particular proteins, actually. So as you can see in this picture, uh, GFAP, which is called glial fibrillary acidic protein, which is more specific for the astroglia, uh, and the beta-3 tubulin, it's more specific for the neurons, actually, and DAPI, it stains the nucleus, the blue color. So as you can see, uh, when we isolate it, it's like it's a mixed... Um, uh, cultures. Uh, when you isolate it from the olfactory bulb of uh, rats, it is a mixed culture. It has like a very less amount of neurons and a lot of amounts of glia cells actually present. Then we further we separated this uh, the neuron specific cells using a defined culture media. And uh, as you can see, this uh, the the purified olfactory neurons, which is a pasty for the beta three tubulin. And this this uh, more specific for the the G protein olfactory receptors. Uh, this also more specific actually. And this beautiful pictures, yeah, it's, it 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 talks about it. It explains about the neural growth factors actually. So it's positive for the neural growth factors. Not only that, we also did uh, blotting analysis uh, using a Western blot, and we found OMP, which is called olfactory marker protein, which present uh, only in the in the matured olfactory neurons. And it's also present in a tubulin auction. And we catherine, I think I, I discussed about tie junctions, right? This is one of the catherine is one of the, the tie junction proteins actually present in the brine. And uh, EBA, it, it's 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 a more specific for the microglia. Microglia, that that that's a microglia I mentioned like a garbage man actually, because microglia is a macrophage, CNS macrophages. So it it has like a unique features. Whenever uh, the the materials, I, I'll I'll go back and show you some of the images actually. Uh, whenever the materials targets the brine, whenever any materials targets brine, this particular microglia, it comes and eat up the uh, the particular harmful materials actually. That's why it's called macrophages. Macrophages means you know the eat up uh, cells actually. So this uh, um, this particular microglia, it acts as uh, uh, kind of supportive and this guard actually it's uh, immune sentinels for the for the brine environment actually. So that 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 that, that that's specific for uh, for for uh, EBA specific. And we also characterize the olfactory epithelium as you can see. This morphology is like a nicely tightly junctioned um, elongated um, cells. It's uh, DAV in, uh, indicated like the days actually. There's five days, nine days, and fourteen days. And uh, it also the the positive for the for the olfactory marker proteins, so as you can see the neurons actually. It also positive for the other tubulins um, in 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 these regions. So after characterizing, you know, I, in the picture like the funny rat picture I shown brine regions, um, uh, we isolated uh, the primary cultures, brine cultures, which is uh, which which comprised of uh, different cell types. Uh, astroglia, the GFAP spe uh, specific astroglia and tubulin specific is, is, is a neuron specific tubulin and O4 is the oligodendrocytes which is called macroglia. 
this is microglia and this is macroglia why the name came because of size actually this this are uh, this uh, size cells are very smaller in size but it it does a lot of lot of uh, works actually in the brain but this cells are like a macroglia all these cell types it wrapping uh, the neurons actually neurons are not alone as i mentioned before neurons always is wrapped with the different sort of cells actually i i will show you some couple of images later slide um, how it is wrapping and kind of things and another thing before going to the nanotechnology why the nanotechnology is important actually i think we are uh, in the past 15 years this this term um, we are we are hearing this nanotechnology nanomedicine and nanofabrications kind of thing even even 10 years back i was fascinated about nanomedicine um uh, neuroscience so why why nanotechnology what is plays in nanotechnology in particular in medicine field particularly in drug delivery field if you see you, you know as a pharmacist you know the biopharmaceutical classification system 1 and 2 3 4 in this uh, four category classification system the 2 and 4 has an issue actually the bioavailability issue in pharmacology term you know we, we used to say like a bioavailability uh because of low solubility and low permeability actually so this low solubility pure aqueous solubility um uh you know our body has a lot of barriers uh, not only blood brain barrier even skin barrier and intestinal barriers um ocular barrier if you want to treat uh, eye diseases ocular barrier there are a lot of lot of barriers actually in your body so in order to treat th- these these uh, barriers in order to cross the barriers the drug should be like highly highly permeable at the same time it should be like a good 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 solubility actually because um, inside cells you know it should be soluble actually that's why nanotechnology platforms for increasing drug resolution improve bioavailability and bio distribution of the drug due to its unique size actually because you know our body a uh, lot of lot of uh, things in our body is in, in the nano size for example dna is nano proteins are in nano size so uh, so so nanotechnology also plays a very important role even these days a um, lot of research is going on in drug nano ionization like pure drug nanoparticles um, a drug just converting the drug in, uh, itself into the into the nanoparticle nano size so uh, and and another sad truth i would like to emphasize here the fifth more approximately 50% of approved drugs and and approximately 70% of novel drugs fall in this category So that's the reason most of the drugs cannot cross the blood brain barrier or any sort of barriers actually we are facing a difficulty in treating uh, neurological diseases and if we want to talk about uh, nanomaterials um, different nanoparticles uh, is available actually so i'm 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 producing very few of you a few of them but la- there are a lot of uh, physiological drugs and lot of things that are available in 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 the research area uh for example liposomes i think many of uh, the people uh, they exploring the liposomes dentimers polymeric moieses gold nanoparticle polymeric conjugate carbon nano mm, nanomaterials so carbon nanomaterials uh, is case uh, the lot of uh, different types of carbon nanomaterials like graphene um um like carbon nanotubes uh, boron nitrides a lot of things actually but it also controversial a uh, lot of controversy is going on between uh, material scientists and and biologists actually because biologists are saying this carbon nanomaterials are not biodegradable but uh, at the same time even even in our research we used for a, for a tissue engineering neural tissue engineering purposes uh, uh, due to its uh, unique nature actually liposomes uh, i think couple of uh, marketed drugs also available dentimers also another controversial um, one there are different generation of dentimers is available but dentimer is also slightly toxic due to its its uh, uh, amine group present in in this uh, in the dentimers and polymer conjugate polymers with a different uh, targeting agent imaging agent antibodies peptides and extra etc and polymeric myosin but my current focus uh, uh, i'm going to talk about the polymeric myosin polymeric nanoparticles in my in my next next uh, few few of my slides actually um so these are the polymeric nanoparticles we used for for our nose to brain transport of uh, i think already i discussed uh, like what are the cells types we used now i i'm saying like what are the nanoparticles we used actually we used five different nanoparticles in a different size from 17 to to almost 500 nanometers actually 
why we use this size i think i mentioned you know nose to brain is 100 to 300 nanometers so ideal 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 to to cross the, the nose barriers that, that's the reason we we, we explored this the wide range of different different size nanoparticles and uh, cross link uh, I think I, I gave you the details. Like I didn't give a synthetic details and characterization details, but just I, I, I gave a snapshot of uh, of this nanoparticle details. The example is chitosin polymethylmethacrylate actually, and PVA PMMA polymethylmethacrylate. Why is cross-linked important? I would like to emphasize here. Uh, without cross-linking, uh, because you know these these polymeric nanoparticles are not like uh, our organic reactions. Not, we are not doing any any covalent. Uh, bond interactions just we are doing a self-assembly like you know self-assembly automatically it will assemble in in certain temperatures not like um, uh, highest temperature just like 60 70 degrees temperatures it automatically assemble so in this case when it goes to the, your body for example blood blood has a lot of proteins actually so in the proteins uh, in in this protein environment this this nanoparticles are not stable actually that's why we used uh, kind of inotropic interactions. Uh, we use sodium tripolyphosphate, it's called TPP, to, to cross-link so that you know the particles will be more more stabilized actually. And we also use the chitosin PMMA and HDMA is called the hydroxylized galactomannan because it's one of the sugar polymers. Um, in order to treat uh, the brain diseases, you know, sugar is the, the main main one of the, the main main parameters actually. Also, we use a peg. Uh, uh, polycaprolactin, uh, then tetronics is one of the USFDA um, uh, surfactants, tetronic, uh, pluronics, uh, there are a lot of materials, uh, different type of uh, materials available. So as I mentioned, you know, we used all, all these nanoparticles for our research. Uh, I, I think I mentioned the, the, the isolation of olfactory sensor neurons and primary cortical neurons. As you can see in the picture, I, I'd like to emphasize when we expose this different polymeric nanoparticles. I'm going to show only one picture because all the nanoparticles gave the same kind of results. So I'm going to show only one picture. Uh, uh, this, this nanoparticles, uh, I like to emphasize, this nanoparticles are fluorescent labeled with uh, FATC or uh, RATC, like fluorescent isothiocyanate um, or um, uh, rhodamine B, actually, this kind of, you know, uh, the, the, the fluorescence materials. As you can see in this picture, um, uh, the tubulin is more specific for the neurons, but um, the non-tubulin, uh, like non-positive, uh, I mean, the, the positive uh, cells, it, it accumulated huge amount of particles, actually. Neurons did not take up any of the particles. Even in the brain cortical neurons, the same uh, same results we, we, see, uh, we, we got it, actually. As you can see, the neurons did not take up the particles. Uh, instead of neurons, some other cell types has taken up the particles. And this is like without without nanoparticles, and so we assume that you know in the brain there are like five different cell types mainly, as I mentioned like endothelial, pericytes, astrocytes, neurons. Um, so we assume that uh, neurons is not responsible for the for the um, for the nanoparticle transport. Uh, apart from neurons, there are other other uh, macrophages available like glial cells present in, in in the brain. So that might be responsible. So what we did, we isolated primary brain culture, which contains three different cell types, actually. One is like astroglia, it's one of the glia cell um, astrocytes. Um, astrocytes are astroglia, you can say. And uh, very, very small amount of neurons and, um, and small amount of microglia, actually, I mentioned, you know, CNS macrophages. So this is a comprised of three different cell types. As you can see, when you when you expose polymeric nanoparticles, the particular cell types, as you can see in the picture, uh, it taken up this uh, the, the the particles. Uh, so the the two reasons actually. So neurons, you know, did not take up the particles. So the the other other two things is present here is microglia and astroglia. In astroglia, I would like to emphasize here in, in the mild injury or external invasion, like foreign invasion into the brain, astrocytes become phagocytes. Phagocytes means, you know, like highly eatable, eatable farmer. And it removes foreign materials to produce uh, inflammatory, uh, uh, you know, it produces anti inflammatory cytokines to protect the brain, actually. And in, um, in, in severe cases, micro, the, uh, this astrocyte, the astroglia, will activate the microglia. So there's only two reasons, uh, the astroglia or microglia. So 
then we we did uh, other uh, experiments using a microscopy and as you can see the particles are internalized uh, uh, internalized the cells actually and we also performed uh, experiments at four degrees centigrade why because uh, in order to know whether the the, the is, is like an active process or non-active process for example you know our physiological temperature as you know it's a very basic actually it's a 37 degree the 37 degree uh, the outside time regardless of outside temperatures the body you know always it creates like a 37 degree so uh, in 37 degree the, our cells are really active all the transporters and then then cell materials cytoplasms will be active in this particular uh, temperatures so when you uh, reduce the temperature uh, the four degrees you know cells most of the the, the uh, transporting things active transports will be suppressed right, at this particular temperature that's why we also did experiments with the four degree and as you can see in four degree the particles only the, the outside surfaces actually not not internalized and um, as i mentioned you know only two cells are responsible one is like astroglia or microglia in this case we we also separated the astroglia from, uh, the purified cultures of astroglia as you can see as you can see in this picture uh, this picture shows you know one if the very few i mean uh, the 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 palpating microprocess like nanoparticles internalized in some selected astrocytes not not all all astrocytes as, as you can see so uh, we presume that um, so this particular astrocytes got uh, kind of activation but uh, not all the astrocytes actually we also repeated the same um, um, like low temperature analysis to in order to know whether it's active or, or um, not active. So as you can see in at the four degree, this um, particles are, are outside, you know, it's not internalized. It's, if you can see in 37 degree particles internalized in, in four degree particles are just outside actually of the cells, which means that, you know, cell is suppressed at this temperature, cells is not allowed any of the materials cells are you know, calm down at this temperature actually that's what i can say so in this case one is some selected astrocytes it taken up this uh, the the particles not not all 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 astrocytes um okay and what we did afterwards we 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 did a separation of microglia from other other cell contaminants also because we uh, then we are uh, we realized the microglia the garbage man of the brine is the reason for the for the, the nanoparticle uptake so we separated the the microglia from uh, from 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 the other other cell types uh, I, I think this is this is a nice video uh, i like to show as you can see um using uh, some mild trypsinization using certain media conditions all the all other cell types is is, uh, is removed and only the, the microglia is stays back uh, in in this in this region um so th th this way we are we are separating the the microglia the cns macrophages or otherwise called as garbage man from 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 the other cell types to 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 do some of the works actually um so as you can see you know this this layer of uh, in this layer the astrocytes neurons are present actually so we are separating this astrocytes and neurons and only the microglia stays back uh, in 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 in, the, in this video so also i i like to show other other uh, dancing video of uh, this microglia as you can see the microglia is a separated microglia it it eat up some kind of debris actually you can see um uh, it's it's, uh, it's see it's a fa it, this is called this is called like a phagocytosis um in in other case you can see even this case also you can see this microglia also you know it eat, eat up this um, uh, the other debris actually so this way if any any particles or any harmful materials if it enters the brine this microglia will 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 chew up those those materials so that's the nature of uh, this microglia or or otherwise called as garbage men actually that's why i kept i kept the name garbage men um then after purification of microglia, uh, as you can see, there's a microglia picture. So this, this is a layer of things is separating uh, only the microglia present in, in this in this region. We we again expose this polymeric nanoparticles I mentioned. Um, as you as I mentioned, polymeric nanoparticles are um, uh, 
um, fluorescently labeled with this, this green color indicates the nanoparticles. And the red color indicates the, the microglia, this microglia specific marker. As you can see, regardless of the, the cellular origin, the both origin nanoparticles, like the cortical and olfactory microglia, it, uh, it internalized the, the huge amount of nanoparticles. So I think we, we got a conclusion at this point, like microglia is the main reason for, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, nanoparticle transport to, to, to the brain, actually. Uh, again, I would like to emphasize here, you know, neurons is not like a separate cells. It always wrap up with other, other glia cells, microglia, macroglia. So when, when any external materials goes without any specificity, this microglia will capture those materials. So in a similar way, we got results actually here. And also this particular cells is positive for the INS. INS means nitric oxide synthase. This is one of the specific biomarkers for, uh, for, uh, for the cells, uh, those are under stress actually. So this, as you can see, these cells are under stress and it, it took up the huge mark, um, I mean, it, it internalized the nanoparticles. And also it's, um, when you introduce the different sort of nanoparticles, I mentioned, you know, cross-linked and this, this all, all these nanoparticles, as you can see the bands, you can see uh, some of the, uh, the nanoparticles produced uh, the positive for this INS uh, antibodies. And further what we did, we isolated uh, this microglia, the specific macrophages from the transgenic mouse, which is like, you know, I think you, you um, like genetically modified organism mouse. Um, this CX3CR1 is nothing but it's a fractal kind receptor is more, more specific for the macrophages. Um, so uh, we, we isolated specific microglia, the purified cultures of microglia, and we introduced uh, the, the rhodamine labeled polymeric nanoparticles, as you can see, rhodamine is the red color. It's nicely decorated this microglia surfaces uh, by, by these uh, rhodamine labeled um, nanoparticles. So we got, uh, we again, we concluded this microglia is, is the main reason for, for, the, for the nanoparticle transport. Uh, I mean, in, in my term, if we want to say is uh, garbage men is responsible for the transport of nanoparticles to, to, to the nostril brine. In other cases, um, we introduced a galactomannan uh, is one of the sugar uh, polymeric nanoparticles. And as you can see in, in, the, in the particular purified cultures, you can see a lot of dots kind of thing actually. I think before this research, I, I, I even, I, I, I never know about this, this particular white dots are coming. So then, then I started analyzing it. Uh, then these dots are nothing but it's a lipid droplet accumulation in glasses because I never exposed, uh, even the most of the researchers never exposed the lipid droplets lipid metabolism in, in, in a CNS uh, brine, brine tissue type cells are what? Because this lipid metabolism, it, it might be a, um, the, the main mechanism for the, the adipose tissues, uh, because which, are, which has like a lot of lipids, or in some certain cases, cancer cells actually, because for the defense mechanism, cancer cells will produce this kind of lipid droplets. But for, uh, the first time we explore this lipid droplets, um, uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this is characteristic of lipid droplets. It contains possible lipid monolayers, lipid anchors, proteins, cholesterol steroids, and a lot of things are actually present. So when you introduce certain nanometers, these this cells, actually the microglia cells, uh, got kind of stress actually, um, which is called as lipid droplet accumulating mic microglia, it's called LDAM. So this stress, because of high levels of ROS, reactive oxygen species, and secrete uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines. And further, we, we, we'd like to investigate using ultrastructures, using an electron microscopy. I think you may came across same scanning electron microscopy or other set of electron microscopy. As you can see in this ultrastructures, uh, these droplets, the, 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 the dot, it indicates the white uh, circles, actually. These are the lipid droplets, which is because of the cell stress. Uh, so this ultrastructures, uh, electron microscopic images clearly indicates the lipid droplets inside this microglia. And again, I'd like to show this uh, dancing videos. As I said, it, you know, microglia is like a dynamic um, uh, sensor. Um, it's a sensor of the brine environment and always is sensing the brine environment. And as you can see, this microglia is like phagocytosing different tissue debris actually, because these are the debris present in, 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 in these regions. Um, so, or, or deadly neurons, as I mentioned, you know, neurogenesis happening. So what, what will happen once neurons 
dies. So, you know, after after neuron's death, uh, it becomes like a debris. Actually, as you can see here, like this becomes debris. So these debris will be cleared by this uh, microglia. See how it eating this uh, the, the the debris actually. And as I mentioned, you know, we use a transgenic mouse uh, to isolate the microglia. This microglia is really active. That's why it's, uh, I mentioned dancing videos. The microglia are always in the active. It's, it's always is monitoring the, the brain environment, actually. So as you can see, how, how is motile it is. Um, so that's why I mentioned it's a never resting garbage man. It's called microglia. Um, so, and also we did, uh, um, are there any other ultrastructure uh, analysis using electron microscopy? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, um, microglia are always policing, I mean, always monitoring the neuronal environment, neuronal bodies in, in a specialized junctions. In this uh, ultrastructure, as you can see, this, this lipid droplet, which is a characteristic of this microglia and neurons, because uh, there is a lot of uh, neuronal bodies, actually, you can see. Uh, this is an, it's called nissel bodies. Um, uh, so this microglia interacting with neurons at, at some some junctional point actually it's called pyrenergic junctions. Uh, so always microglia is monitoring. If any materials is targeting this biological wires, I used to say neurons are like a biological wire because it's crossing the the I mean it it conducting the kind of electricity. So this biological wires, if any material is targeting this biological wires, the microglia will be activated and it, it protects the neurons. As I mentioned, neurons is like a really, really is in, in, a, in, a, in a delicate uh, system and is more peculiar and more sensitive to external uh, insults. And uh, so th these are the things. And I, I'm coming back to the summary of my presentation. Uh, actually, uh, I'm going to present some of the things, but for the summary of this particular results, uh, the inherent defense mechanisms in the olfactory regions, um, uh, particularly the, the mild injury, uh, ostracized become phagocytes, uh, remove foreign materials and produce anti-inflammatory cytokine. In case of the, your materials, it's not toxic, just very, very light toxic, the ostracized will be, will be activated. Astrocytes, astroglia will be taken off um, the, the aspects. And in case of excess molecules, like any toxic materials enters brine, this reactive exercise will produce pro-inflammatory cytokines and it activates the microglia. This is a, this, uh, this uh, garbage man in CNS, um, all CNS resident macrophages and produce a lot of, a uh, lot of inflammations and everything. That's the reason um, uh, even for in, in, in COVID, cases, uh, the coronavirus cases also, because once virus enters, I think people, they feel uh, headache, um, because the headache, you know, uh, it, it comes because of this kind of uh, inflammatory cytokines uh, productions. Um, so based on all the results, I hope you all understand uh, what, I, what I explained to you. If, if you don't understand, you can, you can ask me uh, at, at the end of my presentation. Or if you hesitate to ask any questions, um, you can you can contact me through email. Actually, I mentioned in, in the beginning of my slides. Uh, so our findings reveal that neither olfactory nor forebrain neurons internalize nanoparticles. Conversely, um, olfactory and cortical microglia, that is garbage men, phagocytes, the nanoparticles, independently of their futures, actually. So neurons not, microglia, yes. So th this is the final conclusion I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm giving you at, at this moment. And on other hand, uh, I hope you remember the mechanism of uh, brain penetration. Uh, I mentioned receptor mediated um, transport of uh, nanoparticles or, or any, any drug materials. So when in the previous research, what I mentioned, you know, neurons did not take up any, any of the polymer, uh, any of the materials, any of the nanoparticles. But in this case, we, we, we functionalized polystyrene nanoparticles with cyclic RGD, which is one of the, the cell binding uh, peptides. Uh, we functionalized polystyrene nanoparticles. So as you can see in the pictures, neurons, uh, it nicely additioned the, this, this nanoparticles. Um, this green color um, is indicates the nanoparticles and red is like specific for the tubulin, you know, as I mentioned, it's neuron specific and blue is for the nucleus. As you can see, this this functionalized this peptide functionalized polysynaptic particles. It, it, it nicely additioned this uh, 
um, this, this nanoparticles, which means that it, it comes in the receptor base because there is an integrin receptor. It, it's specific for the cyclic RGD and it bounds on, on, on that particular point actually. So, uh, at the same time, I think uh, I know many many people. It's it's, it's, it's other other some extra works I'm 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 presenting to you. Some of the awareness uh, about those who are working in nano nanomedicine. Um, when when you are synthesizing your nanoparticles, any any sort of nanoparticles, any nanomaterials, uh, either polymeric liposomes or carbon materials. Uh, toxic contamination is the main 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 problem actually because na as I mentioned nanoparticle has a unique surface properties is a uh, surface like really active so it, it bonds any sort of biological materials it's called a bio corona I used to say term protein corona actually it's not about virus but uh, it's about uh, corona means it's like a binding you know it's like adsorption that's the reason uh, even they, they kept the virus name coronavirus because the, there is a spike protein. This spike protein is uh, it bounds with any sort of surfaces actually. That, that's why it's called as corona. So the protein corona, because of protein corona, um, protein corona means protein nanoparticle interactions or bio corona means any, any biomolecules nanoparticle interactions. Um, when you are synthesizing nanomaterials, this endotoxins, I hope you all know uh, about these toxins, um, the pyrogens, um, particularly uh, when you're when you're uh, producing a, a, a parental uh, products, uh, you, you used to use this kind of terms like uh, toxins, uh, pyrogen-free, non-pyrogenic, blah blah. All these all these all these contaminations of words actually you, you explored. So endotoxin is a big contaminant. Um, it bounds on the surface of uh, the polystyrene nanoparticles. In our experience, I, I'm, I'm sharing actually with you. So uh, using a LAL assay, so I think um, as far as I know, your pharmaceutics uh, you used to study this about this assay, limulus amoebicide lysate assay. Actually, this assay is the only assay available to analyze this uh, this endotoxin contamination. As you can see, um, the carboxylated polystyrene and PEG. Uh, PEG we are saying is more safer, but PEG uh, it, it 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 contaminated more than carboxylated particles actually. So uh, always you should be very, very careful when you are, when you are using this kind of, when you are producing nanoparticles. You should, you should produce in the high, high clean room facilities. Uh, you, ha you have to use a, a highly distilled water to produce or distilled materials to produce uh, um, to, to nanoparticles, particularly in brine aspects actually, because brine has microglia. Um, so microglia is responsible for this toxins actually. So that's the reason even for the corona patients, you know, it targets the macrophages and because of macrophages, a lot of sepsis like cyto cytokine storm happens. Mm, a lot of inflammatory cytokines produced and um, so th this sepsis is the main, main problem actually. So even for when you're synthesizing nanomaterials, you should be very careful about the endotoxin contaminations. That's, that's my conclusion at this moment. So far, I discussed about uh, nano medicine point of view. Nano is not only for the application point of view, even nano is for the toxicology point of view, nano safety. For example, many, many uh, inorganic nanoparticles, for example, silver, it's, um, it's, it's a toxic uh, uh, for, the, for the human kind. Um, and particularly, uh, I'm talking about nanoparticles in the central nervous tissue, nervous tissue like brain tissue. Um, as you may know, these days, in the past five years, there's a lot of products, marketed products uh, available in the, in the market, um, which contains nanomaterials. So there is an urgent need to assessment of biological effects and health risks, not only biological effects and also as well as the health risks of nanomaterials because of the acceleration of both manufacturing skills and intentions to use actually even uh, a lot of uh, costumes, uh, uh, a lot of uh, um, like you know um, materials like ointments and and even even fabrics um, I, I saw like silver pant uh, a lot of materials actually which contains nanomaterials um, so it's accidental exposure or manufacturing scales so this nanomaterials it pass it spreads in the nano uh, in, in the environment even I, I also wrote uh, very small articles um, uh, recently the coronavirus, you know, it has like a spike protein, right? It's a, it's a glycoprotein. This proteins, uh, 
with coronavirus also spreading in the air so when 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 the nanoparticles in the air you know a lot of nanoparticles in the air for example carbon nano, nanoparticles uh, from the diesel materials and everything it's a it, um, carbon nanomaterials is spreading in the air so this this virus it's it easily makes corona with with the, with the nanoparticles and it spreads and it, it affects the, the human kind actually uh, i think we are we are we are new to this coronavirus this this particular area but it, this is my my hypothesis my assumptions so uh, a- anything can happen actually in case of brine aspects as i mentioned nurse to brine because nurse is just like outside the, the environment it connects the brine so uh, any sort of nanomaterials contaminated nanomaterials uh it can it can penetrate into uh, through your nose to to brine it affects your brine actually so roots of invasion permeations and distribution in various cellular tissue compartments and effects on different types of neural tissue types as still we, we we don't know actually about this particular area of research nano safety uh, but still people are exploring and european commission has invested huge amounts um uh, huge funding for this nano safety um and so uh I, I, the last part i'd like to thank i'd like to acknowledge so many people actually um and my my lab lab people uh, in 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 technion um so it's a nice family actually the we, we enjoyed a lot of things actually together not only in science apart from science uh, we, we enjoyed a lot actually those times um i like to thank the european commission for funding our projects um because they are funding uh, huge amounts to to explore this um, nano neuroscience aspects and uh, mercury fellowship one of the prestigious fellowships for the for the for the um, phd's or postdocs um i like to i like to thank teva pharmaceuticals i hope you all know about teva pharmaceuticals which is based in israel but it's situated in more than 90 countries um we got this grant to explore this nose to brain transport of um, nanoparticles and also I, i'd like to thank council for higher education israel israel is fantastic in doing research and i like to thank israel and technion is um, is which is called uh, israel institute israel institute of technology but in other other way otherwise is called other way is called as mediterranean institute of technology that's mit of mediterranean um a lot of nobel prize winners uh, in technion and i'm i'm always looking forward widely collaborate and successful work you can you can stay in touch you can you can contact me especially students uh, i know dr saravanan told me a lot of students are attending in the seminar uh, i don't know how many of you is i think i can see 293 participants i don't know how many of you are attending in uh, through you, youtube um so you can if you want some details uh, i cannot provide you positions but but i can i can guide you um in in different aspects so feel free to contact me anytime um so thank you thank you for your kind attention and thank you very very much for this invitation i thank um, once again i thank dr saravanan and professor uh, uh, alagasami for for this kind invitation and i also thank the mnr college of pharmacy management uh, for the such a, such a wonderful webinar series um this i think this is a ideal time to explore uh, uh Uh, to share science uh, through webinars um, it's, it's a nice uh, nice interactions um so thank you thank you thank you so much and all the participants particularly i hope you understand uh, what i explained to you if if you don't understand please please ask me any questions i i always wish to receive some questions if i if i can able to answer i can answer now otherwise i can i can email you later actually the, about the answers Thank you so much for this wonderful in- invitation and thanks thanks again. Yes. Thank you Dr. Murli sir for your wonderful session. Thank you. So now the forum is open for questions. So if you have any questions you can raise your hands and we will unmute you you can ask your questions. So if anybody having any questions you can raise your hand we will unmute it. Yes, Mr. Gauri Radhakrishnan, you can ask your question. Mr. Gauri Radhakrishnan. So unmute yourself and you can ask your questions.
Hey Gaudi, can you hear me? Ah, yes. Nah. Yes, sir, you can ask your question, sir. So I think some disturbances in him. I think we can go ahead with the other other fellows. Mr. Morgan Raj. Mr. Morgan Raj. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you, sir? Ah, fine, fine. You can ask your question, sir. Uh, hey. Hi, sir. Morley, sir. Hey, Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm good, Morgan Raj. How about you? I am fine, sir. I am fine. I hope uh, you are all safe in this pandemic. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, sir. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think you also safe in your country there. Yeah, it's, it's uh, now we are okay actually. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you so much, sir. I uh, listened to your valuable uh, research. Thank you so much. Experience you shared with us. Thank you. Uh, so I have a doubt in that. Yeah. Actually, I am a research scholar. I did my. Research in uh, snake venom. I mean, uh, I'm just kidding you. Actually, uh, you have doubt in my experience, or uh, you have doubt in my presentation. Sir, yeah, uh, doubt in your uh, present. Uh, okay. I have some uh, doubt in your uh, okay, presentation. Uh, yeah, sir. I, just, okay, I want to clear that. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, sir. yeah, yeah, I can. Yes. Sir, uh, sir, how uh, will neurons by prevent fatty acid toxicity? Uh, actually, as mentioned, um, you know, neurons uh, has a lot of. Uh, Primary uh, uh, prevention is like a glial cells. Okay? okay. Apart from glial cells, neurons also uh, ex uh, expressing a lot of transporters. Actually, for example, I mentioned efflux transporters, like it's called um, uh, PGP. Actually, like a protein. Uh, those efflux transporters. See, any toxic materials goes uh, into, into particular cell types. This 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 efflux transporters is called ABC transporters. It, it efflux oh. away. Um, that, that's the reason, actually, even even in cancer or a, any other any other, other um, diseases, that okay. drug resistance actually, because okay. when when you are introducing any materials, this this effluent okay. transporters will spit out actually, you know, it spit out the, the, those materials, so enough materials will not reach the particular cell types actually. In a similar way, uh, neurons also doing uh, through their transporters actually. Okay. But apart from that, you know, the the uh, this uh, the glial cells uh, is uh, glial cells astroglia and microglia is is is, is it, it is being it doing a brain homeostasis actually it is monitoring and it you know it doing a like um, stabilizing the environment actually so any any toxic things will not target this neurons directly but in extreme sure. case you know one one for example, in certain disease cases, actually neurons degenerations happen. But in extreme cases, neurons will be affected. That's why a lot of neurodegenerative diseases are are, are affected. So I hope I answered your question. Yes, yes, sir. correct, correct. Sir, another question. Yeah. Uh, why to maintain a temperature in astrocytes? Is it only for specific nerve cells or any other other than the astrocytes? Uh, no, not for the for the for the exercise actually. Even even for uh, I mentioned um, not only for the exercise, even for uh, any sort of cells actually, you can you can do this this uh, the temperature assessment actually. As I mentioned okay. in my presentation, you know, 37 is uh, like a physiological temperature. Yes, sir, most, yes, sir, yes. Most of our uh, research, what we are doing, you know, we are working on 37 degree. Just we are if you are working on cell biology, you are just you are the very basic things. You know, you are keeping in 37 degrees. Yes. Yes, sir, yes. Uh, in 37 mm. degree, as I mentioned, all the transporters, you know, cells has a lot of transporters like glucose transporters and efflux transporters, influx transporters, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay. All okay. the okay. things will be active, active in this physiological temperature. That's why you know physiological temperatures. If temperature reduces, what will happen? You know, right? So mm. it's not only specifically for the society, it's specifically for the for each and everything. You also can can do same experiments for the cancer cancer type of cells, and you can. Uh, you can you can uh, give a mechanism like your your um, uptake or your interaction is based on active or passive something like this. Sure, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mohan. Thank you, sir. Anand, sir. So, any more questions from the students? You can feel free to ask me questions. I'm. 
any, any question you can ask any basics um because um i'd like to share some like some of my experiences uh, 10 12 years back uh, i was in, in the same situation like you people um i'm i, I was really sh- shy to ask questions and even i never explored this about neurons i know neurons but uh, i know neural stem cells but I, i never know how it looks actually so but but in the past 10 years i explored all the all the things actually so you can you can you can you can raise your hands you can ask any questions particularly students actually you can you can sir what type of ca- nanoparticles are used in the treatment of cancer uh in the treatment of cancer you know as i mentioned liposomes actually i think um um doxil you know th- 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 those 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 kind of things they used uh, in 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 the cancer treatment uh and and another case uh, there is a new term you may came across photoablation therapy uh, many researchers they are using a gold nanoparticles uh, it's like a localized yeah. delivery actually so you you can you can no, 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 no. you can you can target i mean you can inject uh, into the in, lo, you can localize this nanoparticles and passing heat it, that's why it's called like photo photo uh, ablation or photo photodynamic therapy so gold nanoparticles are using and a lot of liposomes uh, products commercial products are available they work kami the के लिए कोई कमेटी लग रही उसी समय क्यों हाथ पैर मार रहे हैं लोग अलग से कमेटी क्यों नहीं बनवाती जा क्यों ठीक 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 ठीक
and uh, curcumin you know the, the the application of curcumin curcumin will treat uh, the, the cancer more specifically that's the reason they are combining this whole nanoparticles with, with curcumin or um, any sort of things on thank you thank i, you, I hope I, I hope you understand my my answer yes right? yeah. yes sir the combinations for the theranostic purpose yes sir yes Dr. Okay. Murali, uh, uh, I am Malagar Sami. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, some of the students during the presentation, they raised the uh, clarifications. How do we apply for this, uh, uh, these fellowships like Marie Curie fellowships, all uh, how to apply? So can you uh, address them? Yeah, sure, sir. Definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I, I wish to help our fellow Indians, particularly the farmer people, actually. Um, uh, also, I would like to share uh, some, some of my experiences. Um, uh, you know, I worked in so many institutions and I, 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 I never saw like any pharmacy people there. They used to work with me actually, particularly from India. Okay, I saw like some, some pharmacy people in USA and some places actually, but, but for the, this kind of technical institutions, um, um, I, I never saw pharmacy people from, from India. Uh, that's a big lack. I don't know information wise, or maybe our people are more more narrow. You are not thinking more wide aspects. If you are re really interested in research, um, as uh, as I mentioned in my bio sketch, uh, I'm, I'm I right now I'm 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 interested like not interested even I'm I'm trying a couple of startup things actually based on my ideas. You know I had a lot of experiences. I worked in, uh, with many, many laboratories, many, many big professors. So after my experiences, uh, like I worked in a many interdisciplinary. For example, as I started my, my life as a pharmacist, um, then, then I explored nanobiotechnology, drug discovery, of course. Uh, during the time I was collaborating with uh, Alagar Sami sir, um, drug discovery. And I explored nanobiotechnology, uh, nanotechnology, nanofabrications, and also explored neural cell biology. Um, so, also I, I, I did a lot of other other things like uh, chip microfluidics and extra etc. Uh, so when you combine all these things, you get a lot of ideas actually. So a lot of lot of lot of ideas actually. You will not understand or you will not get an answer from one field. If you work on another field, then you will come to know what what is what is what is lacking in, in another field actually. So okay. I'm I'm answering uh, Professor Alagasami's question. Um, fellowships, actually, Marie Curie Fellowship is one of the Europe's prestigious fellowship. Uh, European Union is spending a lot of money um, on on these fellowships. Uh, these fellowships, both for the for the PhDs and postdocs. Postdocs, uh, that's a different case, actually. Um, you need to write your own proposal. That is a really competitive proposal in a different aspects. Um, that, that, that you need to choose a nice, nice area of research, and that, that's a different actually postdocs. In case of PhDs uh, in Europe, uh, there is a website called Euraxis um, that that advertises a lot of job opportunities uh, in all over Europe, and also you can explore the same um, Marie Curie actions. You just type in google like Marie Curie actions you you will find the options called jobs you can apply any sort of jobs um, for a phd's master internships or postdocs industrial openings uh, because uh, european U union has uh, so regulation to to advertise any openings in these websites like Marie Curie, and there is another uh, one is called euraxis e u r a x e w -S, s euraxis Apart from that, there are other websites like Nature Jobs. Um, so these are the these are the, the websites available in, 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 uh, to, to search for the jobs actually. Um, in case of masters, for example, after undergraduate, uh, you'd like to explore masters, right? There is a the European Union fellowship called U, uh, Erasmus Mundus Masters list of mass courses are there actually when i was doing my you know those times there are not many many master courses actually but these days uh, a lot of master courses they introduced and salary wise is really huge salary uh, even for the masters you get like 1000 euro i think that's more than enough as as a, as a, as, a, as a single man and is of phds um 
salary also very good. Uh, it depends on the country you get salary. For example, Germany. Uh, in Germany, there is another website called DAD. D double A D DAD actually. Uh, you can um, you can also visit um, Goethe Institute actually. Every big cities, um, uh, I think. In in Hyderabad, they have a Max Muller Bhavan actually, the German German uh, Cultural Exchange Institute. If you want to do your procedural degree in like high studies in Germany, you can you can go to the institute. There is a seminars. You can attend the seminars. They'll give a lot of information. You get a lot of information. So, what are the websites I mentioned? Like Euraxis, Nature Jobs, Dad, and also you can you can explore each university Absolutely. websites. Um, at the same time, you, call, you also can can um, talk to professors. Actually, those who are coming to India, but the big problem is funding. Actually, we are we are always we are struggling for funding, um, and you know, highly competitive. Uh, we are like 28, 30 countries. We are we are competing for a funding. So uh, all the time in Europe, another thing is there is no permanent jobs. Actually, always is tenure track because you need to prove your your efficiency every three years or five years once. Um, um, so you need to apply. It's highly competitive. So always we wish we wish uh, the candidates to, to get their own funding uh, or to apply for this kind of fundings like Marie Curie uh, or some something else. Actually, so. Uh, also for masters Erasmus Mundus. Um, in case of PDF, I think postdoctoral um, postdoctoral is not like a degree; it's kind of job actually. You can you also can think about industrial postdocs if you if you want to explore industry after PhD. You can you can you can choose industrial post. A lot of industries like AstraZeneca, Novartis, they are they are offering industrial postdocs. You can you can also choose these, those things. Industrial PhD is also. Uh, and uh, I would say NES, Singapore, NES and NTU is uh, Asia's top universities, uh, top 50 universities. You also can explore in, in those. NES is offering a lot of star fellowships and et cetera, et cetera. You can, you can explore those things. Um, in, um, in Europe and US also a lot of, uh, but the US problem is um, uh, they, they don't have much fellowships. Uh, you need to go with your own funding, then then they, they offer you. Um, but US has a lot of postdoctoral fellowship. If your profile is very good, they, they, they offer you a postdoctoral fellowship. Those postdoctoral fellowships are really highly competitive. For example, NIH fellowships, so you, you need to submit a, um, many, many proposals uh, to, to get such, such fellowships. Um, um, so I, I, I hope, sir, I, I answered your question. Like, these, these, are, these are the scholarships and fellowships available to, to explore it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's clear, sir. So, okay. still from the uh, uh, participants, any more uh, yes, clarifications sir. Yes, sir. like regarding the subject or uh, regarding this type of uh, admissions or uh, fellowships? Uh, still, you can feel free to contact Dr. Morali is available sir. for us. Sir. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, yeah. One, one by one, we will call you, please. Uh, if you are, all you people are talking at the time, it is very difficult. So we will call one by one. Please wait. So, uh, Dr. Murali, so there yeah. is an, uh, one question from a uh, YouTube contestant. Yeah. So he is repeatedly asking that, please ask my questions. Yeah, so he, uh, the question is from Dr. Swadi Mera. Yeah. So he, she is asking, sir, can you specify any course elaborated one to learn nanoparticle characterization and how to process out or extract informations of these sums. So she's asking about the course related to one nanoparticles. Is there yes. any course is there and what is the process? Um, actually, uh, she, uh, you mentioned she's a, she's a doctor, like she's ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, she's, she's doctor, Dr. Yeah. Swadi Mehra. Uh, hi, hi, Dr. Swadi. Uh, yes, thank you for your question. Um, I think in this, uh, uh, corona is pandemic, but uh, it helps us a uh, lot of a lot of things. Actually, I mean, a lot of courses. Uh, for instance, as far as I know, um, uh, the, the a lot of European institutes they yeah. are conducting, 
conducting online courses uh, especially on nano not only in nano even in many many subjects uh, university of 20 actually they are conducting one one online course actually the course is about very basic um, familiar in nanotechnology they are well versed in nanotechnology they have a fan excellent facilities uh, they, they, they are conducting a, such a courses actually online courses you can you can register in that courses I, I don't know the exact name but you can you can explore those things actually uh, they are they are they are conducting in each and every aspects so I, I just I, I just glanced at actually I don't know uh, the much detail but they're, they're covering each and everything uh, from the nano fabrication point of nano medicine nanoparticle nanoparticle characterizations and etc etc I, I think you need to explore um, uh, the, the internet. In other case, uh, there is a public platform also available, NanoWerk actually, I suppose. So you also can can go explore and 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 get to know about the about these courses available. But as far as I know, uh, University of Twenty Netherlands they are organizing such online courses, so you can you can attend uh, such courses actually. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I cannot answer you more, but but this is the only thing I know actually at, at, at the moment. Um, thank you, sir. So now uh, that uh, I can unmute that Manas Manisa. Yeah. Manisa. You can unmute yourself and you can talk. Manisa. Yes, sir. Ah, yes. You can ask Hi. your question, madam. Now. Hi, Manisha. मैं nano safety uh, nano particle is not just like nano particles actually nano particle has a lot of issues actually for example uh, aggregations agglomerations and um, there is no uniformity lab to lab for example if i'm synthesizing nano particle if you are synthesizing the same nano particle there are a lot of deviations actually so there is a lot of regulatory issues in 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 uh, in, in nano particles actually that's why um uh, still nano medicine it's in 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 its infancy very very few few um products are available against cancer uh, as i mentioned liposome liposomal formulations um but for the diabetes uh, it's uh, there's no nano particles uh, but uh, the nanotechnology has plays a very important role in in diabetes like diabetes diagnostics actually uh, nanotechnology is not only for the for the thera uh, therapeutic you know diagnostics also uh, important actually so nanotechnology in diabetes much used in in diabetes diagnostics actually not in therapeutics um and, and now people are exploring um but i don't know how far it's this nano can 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 cure this kind of diabetes actually type 1 type 2 etc etc but cancer there are solutions there are a lot of methods lot of things uh, they are exploring um as i mentioned non invasive is um, another area of research um there are few market uh, available products lot of products in in clinical trials um so yeah monisha that that, that 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 that's that's what i can say at, at the moment thank you sir and nice presentation sir thank you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you Hello. Uh, hello, sir. Yes, sir, one more question. Yeah. Yes, Sakira. Your name is Sakira. Uh, sir, I am Google uh, from from JK and Raja Gaja Pharmacy. Sir, uh, uh, herb herbal products also go in uh, with the nanotechnology or uh, same drugs from sir. Yeah, actually, herbal formulations uh, is another another way of exploring nanotechnology. For example. um i know we are we are exploring um plant extracts uh, or ayurvedic formulations and extracts etc um as i mentioned you know we are 
uh, we are we are what we are doing we are the polymeric mices or polymeric nanoparticles you are you are just uh, encapsulating the herbal formulations you are making a uh, polymer herbal formulations actually that gives a lot of advantage over uh, conventional herbal formulations for example control release you also can go for the target base actually i think a lot of exploration is going on but again it's, it has like a regulatory issues um, um, not not like much marketed products actually but but a lot of people are working on it um, uh, that's why even i, I also suggest uh, to use people um, uh, recently one of my friend he contacted me uh, asking for applying ois uh, then I, I suggested him to use um, polymers to to encapsulate uh, to deliver actually because just doing herbal formulation is is you know it's not much useful actually you can you can just you can uh, make a herbal polymer herbal formulations and you can you can deliver uh, to any sort of roots actually so that that's that's a very good good area of research actually so um, um local i hope sir you know, that sir that product i have also clinic trial um yeah there are actually there are some products are in phase one clinical trials actually for sir i i, I don't know exactly uh, what kind of disease actually but, but this this natural um uh products is in is in clinical trials actually certain products are in clinical trials but it's in just in, uh, in, in initial clinical trials actually not not like advanced clinical trials thank Because you sir another problem is you know yes, when you when you are going for a clinical trials and other other regulatory issues uh they ask for a for the active constituent actually in herbal you know another problem is um, the, the whole herbal is more active because of uh, agonist issue but uh, when you when you isolate a particular active constituent sometimes it's, it's inactive actually sometimes it's not soluble for example okay curcumin we are so lucky to have a curcumin it, it has like a wide application but but you cannot expect same active constituents from from all all herbal things so there are some regulatory issues also hello sir can i have yeah. a question sir yeah please the i'm working on adrenaline sir it's effects sorry sorry uh, what's your name what's your name i'm sorry my name is aigiran sir okay um adrenaline and it's uh, effects on the neural effects you know i mean you know problem we have adrenaline artificially in our body is there any effects in our head brain sir i I cannot hear a coy's question properly. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, sir. sir hello. Uh, good morning, sir. Yes, hello. Sir. Yeah. This hello? is Doctor Somati. Hello. Yeah. I can hear you. Hello, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. You can ask your question, madam. Now, someone they asked me about uh, neurons. Uh, I, I, I didn't get his uh, question. Um, maybe if you can repeat his question, I can I can answer. Actually. Sir, Hello? I have one question, sir. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Can I complete my question, sir? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear. so please one by one you can ask if you are uh, at a time if you are asking means we can't able to answer for uh, anybody's questions so please wait based on that you are raising your hands we are uh, calling one by one that time you can ask i'm waiting for the the question who asked about neurons actually yeah. i am yes, sure yeah sir i am working on the adrenal line sir okay adrenal line hormone yeah if, if we have i mean artificially into a body induce on body is yeah. it having any neurological effects of course yes um artificial things uh, always uh, it has like a neurological effects actually um that, you know due to this neurotransmitter uh, differences definitely you'll have a lot of neurological um uh, defects actually and it causes any severe effects or minor effects sir it's a, it's a minor effects actually because uh, severe effects when it comes when it it affects the central neurons like a spinal cord or something because you know neurons are like a, this this these are like you know just peripheral neuron just it it affects just just uh, locally actually you not you not get like severe effects or 
uh, when 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 you do something on on this uh, region like you know pons or spinal cord and those regions that's a problematic area but uh, uh, other neurons uh, it's not it, you'll not get like a severe uh, uh, effects actually so are these affecting our vital system sir in, i mean vital body system in regulating their uh, physiological activities yeah for example um, uh i mentioned uh, as i mentioned amyloid lateral sclerosis actually it's is one of the genetic based actually but but otherwise uh, i can say in a layman term paralysis it affects our regular body for example you know uh, certain hand or a certain part of body it's it's paralyzing even even sometimes face um uh, is sometimes it also affects the locally actually not like a central Uh, paralysis in in whole it affects the whole central for example stroke actually it affects the 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 whole whole nervous system um, if 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 uh, uh, if if anyone anyone gets stroke actually but in other cases uh, it affects uh, locally some muscle paralysis like due to some some i can say is neuro ne- neuromuscular disorders actually Uh, some neuromuscular disorders are local and uh, still there are a lot of research is going on to treat those locally uh, affected neurons neurological disorders uh, if i remember correctly there are a lot of companies working on uh, giving electrical uh, impulses to to rejuvenate the neurons to activate the neurons actually that that synapses um, in in the neuromuscular regions so i, I think it's it's new neuro- it's, it's a locally as well as centrally uh, sometimes it depends on on the injury and part of injury type of injury thank you hello yeah, hello yeah hello yeah i can hear you uh, uh, sir uh, is it prabharan from karpamchi ananda college of pharmacy yeah uh, sir one more question you told laser confocal scanning microscopy yeah. is it is it available in india yeah of course uh, uh, Actually. uh could you please tell uh, where is it uh as far as i know all the all the iits they have uh, such facilities um, okay sir because confocal uh, is not like a new microscopy uh, okay sir but, but other microscopy i mentioned like advanced microscopy is like a new but the 10 years okay. old uh, microscopies uh, advanced microscopy is called a uh, storm uh, stochastic okay. uh, optical microscopy that resolution is 2 to 5 nanometers but okay. confocal and uh, resolution is 2 250 nanometer it is available in many parts of india actually i think each and every institute they have a, a very good confocal then um, to be frank uh, what we have it in in european institutions uh, indian institute has more more advanced version of confocals actually mm-hmm. the problem is india you know in the past 10 years indian iits indian institutions has developed a lot and uh, in the past 10 years they they bought a lot of novel instruments new instruments so everything is like more more updated than than abroad actually so a lot of institutions all the iits they have um you, you are in nanda college of pharmacy in euro right so you can you can explore um um uh, iit madras is a bit far maybe you can explore an iic bangalore actually they have a safe facilities also for for this kind of and um, central facilities uh, um, probably in salem maybe periyar university they they must have maybe they are not operating but but they they must have this kind of instruments actually kind of to my steps okay sir. sir one more question sir. yeah and sir you delivered brain transport of polymeric nanoparticles yeah that is uh, is it possible to treatment of alzheimer disease yeah of course that actually uh, you know the polymer itself is not like a therapeutics actually the polymers is uh, the polymers i shown uh using this polymeric nanoparticle we used to encapsulate drugs or we used to conjugate more specific uh, um uh, materials uh, like more more specific antibodies or peptides we conjugate with this polymers to to cr- to cross actually the initially what why we check the polymeric nanoparticles whether the polymeric nano what is the stability and how it is behaves inside uh, uh, your brain um uh, whether it is crossing whether it's it has a good interaction whether it is it has a good biocompatibility that's the reason we did a preliminary experiments but later you know we 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 encapsulate um drug molecules we put uh, drug molecules to to encapsulate them we can we can we can treat uh, um, alzheimer's disease and and things but the problem is uh, to treat alzheimer's disease you know uh, the, the different mechanisms um the 
the uh, alpha the beta fibril the the the, the, the crystals present uh, in 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 the brain um still a lot of research is going on actually um to treat uh, this alzheimer's diseases um, more locally and using a uh, drugs um so still a lot of lot of research actually is going on on this particular area uh, yeah sir one more question yeah uh, sir one more question yeah please ah sir uh, uh, any possible alternative model for your study hello yeah you mean which, which alternative uh, study uh, sir uh, like now you are using rat model yeah. uh, any alternative models you are, yeah. you are using uh, uh, mice uh, exactly adults Actually, uh, yeah uh, i'm sorry uh, uh, there are a lot of alternative yeah. models for example um, uh, you know of ethical issues even in india not only in india many 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 i think i'm i'm muted hello can you hear me yes yeah. sir yeah there is sir uh, as i mentioned you know uh, especially for the, for the neurological diseases even for cancers these days uh, there is a lot of models actually developing models itself uh, is a recent trend nowadays um there are different kinds organoids uh, models actually like a patient specific organoids for example you know we are exploring the 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 cells from the animals actually but these days uh, what 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 many researchers are doing even um we are, i'm doing actually the, those things um uh, we we we, are, we we submitted uh, papers to science advances um um uh, the, the creating a models actually like um in vivo mimicking models using a patient samples auction that's that's the reason trend is going on in 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 the area of cancer in the area of uh, neurodegenerative diseases any sort of areas actually because taking a taking directly the patient samples um patient samples and prepare a prepare a, like a patient tissues like is kind of organoids and using your materials to test actually because using animals um, always there is a interspecies variation you know um sometimes in vivo is giving a very good answer but when you know, it goes to the phase 1 phase 2 clinical trials is is getting a lot of failures actually it's a big big disadvantage for the for the drug discovery that's the reason reason is patient derived like xenograft yeah. models patient derived yeah. organoids models are more alternatives for for this kind of uh, things i present just and there is a lot of uh, again uh, there is a lot of ethical issues particularly in case of neuro neurodegenerative diseases actually the, uh, as i mentioned you know the papers we submitted uh, in that i i used uh, human cells most of the human cells but i, I couldn't use human microglia actually because getting a human microglia it's it's um, highly uh, ethical issues and um, um, uh, actually we 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 I, i'm trying actually my 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 level best to to use human microglia that's why i was talking with uh, one of the the big medical center in in pittsburgh uh, usa university pittsburgh medical center and i think they they agreed to to work with the human samples i think in the future we may we may access uh, human samples human microglia or certain kind of things but in case of cancer you can use human samples it's very easy actually so good morning sir i have one question sir yeah sir uh, <clears throat> this is a very nice presentation sir and uh, very good informative also thank you so my, much thank you my name is mahender sir mahender, actually yeah. uh, nano materials and uh, this nano particles are uh, the good in the therapeutic uh, effect but even as well as uh, it's a uh, nano particles are uh, toxic to the tissues also Yeah, that's right. And uh, this is uh, ax uh, it is a uh, oxidative stress or inflammatory yeah. markers or whatever. This is uh, cytokine production. Then, yeah. how what are the how to we uh, decrease these problems in the nanoparticles? What are the uh, methods or what are the alternative ways to overcome these problems? How? Yeah. Actually, that that uh, the, regarding the nano safety, that's a, that's the reason I presented last two slides about nano safety. Uh, I'm saying nano safety. It's it's another way is called nano toxicology. as you said like uh, rose generation cytokine generations and everything is because of certain nano uh, nanoparticles actually that's the reason most of our research uh, we are utilizing um, polymeric uh, materials uh, which was approved by us fda is shortly called as uh, grass formulations actually um 
Um, so uh, that, that, that's the main reason we are using a polymers actually. If you want to reduce those toxic effects, you should not use, as a biologist I'm speaking, uh, you should not use uh, inorganic uh, nanoparticles actually. Um, inorganic nanoparticles and metal nanoparticles particularly. Uh, I think I, ha I have a quite interesting uh, story um, to tell us about uh, silver. Uh, you know, silver, um, uh, I think long back uh, there is a guy from US actually, yes, I, I suppose in US, I don't know exactly which, which country. Um, he got Argeria, Argeria means it's like a blue skin. Um, you know, this man, what he did, he, he continuously consumed um, silver uh, ions uh, for, for a month actually. After, after a few months, he got like a Argeria, like a blue skin and something like this, because when silver particles, it bounce on, on, on hemoglobin and it, uh, he got such color. And I, I think afterwards he also died actually. So you have to choose the materials, um, uh, the like more biocompatible, biodegradable materials actually. Uh, that, that's the reason we are, we are more sticks with the, with the polymers or these days, a lot of research is going on uh, SARNA, yeah, uh, RNA, something like this you have to use a physiological relevant things actually don't use uh, metal or uh, oxide nanoparticle like copper oxide blah blah these things actually don't use it actually one and also another thing you know uh, you ask me like how to prevent actually one thing you, you have to choose the materials you have to choose the polymeric materials which is approved by usfd or something else um and uh, another case uh, still we are exploring actually uh, how to prevent this uh, the nanomaterial issues, uh, like regulatory issues, like aggregations, and uh, um, so th this is uh, still we are we are we are exploring these these aspects actually. I hope I, I answered your question. Oh, yes, yes, sir. And uh, which na uh, nanoparticle size is the excuse best? Excuse me, sir. Yes, Please, sir? excuse me, uh, Doctor Morley, sir. Ah, sir, there are so many people, sir, they are ready to ask the questions. So okay. if you are uh, answering the questions somewhat fast, now, it may be an good, sir, yeah. because so many people, sir, uh, they are waiting. Okay. So so I'm also requesting uh, participants uh, to ask your questions directly and I can get your answers, please. Uh, so sorry, sir, because and we are getting uh, so many questions from YouTube uh, also, sir. YouTube visitors also. Yeah. And uh, uh, till now, some 3000 people, sir, uh, watched our uh, YouTube live, sir. So it was on a uh, very good achievements oh, in our uh, live seminars. Oh, yeah, uh, so yeah. we are we are successfully that uh, three thousand people are watching sir, till now. Uh, luckily, uh, you you mentioned this three thousand numbers after my seminar presentation because if you mentioned before, um, <laughs> I, I I may be like um, get shocked and uh, so three thousand is really huge actually. I I uh, never presented uh, in front of three thousand people. Um, <laughs> My, my seminars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. In uh, in our Zoom meetings also at uh, at this two hour times also at uh, all the time that uh, three three hundred people are there in the meeting, sir. Ah, and okay. in YouTube also that several people are watching and still they are watching and many people they are giving on uh, a good comments also, sir. Thank you. So, so my my sincere request is that uh, as many people they are trying to ask the questions from starting itself. So if you are going somewhat fast means it may be on uh, a good. Yeah. Sure. 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 Yes. Sir, I Hello. have a question. Yeah. There are different sizes of nanoparticles. Exactly. How do you separate the uh, nanoparticles by size? Uh, actually, when you that, that's a that's a big challenge in in in, in a synthesis. Actually, when you are synthesizing, for instance, certain nanoparticles, um, uh, like a metal nanoparticles, you know, you produce the 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 poly. That, that's what we used to say is a poly dispersibility index (PDI). Actually. In case of metal nanoparticle, like silver nanoparticle, the, the dispersity index is wide. But in polymers, you know, you get like, uh, you cannot get more specific, like 100 nanometers exactly, but you get like plus or minus. That's why I mentioned in, in my table also, plus or minus actually. You can able to synthesize 90 to 110 actually. That's why we used to mention like 100 plus or minus 10. Um, so most of the polymeric nanoparticle, you can define the sizes by, by different reactive conditions. Uh, but in, in metals, it's really, really difficult to, 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 to make it actually. Uh, metal means I'm not mentioned gold because gold, you can able to synthesize more highly monodisperse uh, nanoparticles. Uh, but in silver, we, we had such a difficult and iron nanoparticles actually, that, that also is a huge poly dispersity. You cannot, uh, that's, a, that's a synthetic challenge actually. Um, 
I can say I, I cannot like explain you specific methods, but but this is a really challenging one actually. Thank Hello, you, good sir. afternoon, Very sir. Hello. Yeah. Hello, good afternoon, sir. My name is Devi. Yeah. Devi. Sir, can we use nanoparticle treatments in the chromosomal disorders like Down syndrome, Edward syndrome, and Pachu syndrome? Actually, this this is uh, still in a research. Um, uh, I, I think uh, you 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 explore the PubMed. You know, one if you can see very very tens or hundreds of few, uh, papers. One if tens of papers actually on this particular chromosomal uh, disorders. Recently, uh, very very few researchers they they started exploring this kind of uh, chromosomal disorders um, using a nanotechnology. Uh, I, I don't know how far is clinically possible, but but but. few research is going on at this at this um uh, at this moment actually even in pubmed or web of science if you search articles you cannot find many articles actually very few tens of articles you can able to find actually so i, I think this is 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 still in 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 its infancy okay sir thank you hello sir yeah my to know and i just want to know that uh, it will work on cns uh, disorder or not Which one? No, no, no particle, sir. Um, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> uh, that's a big challenging. Yeah, uh, it works in in the same as disorders or not. Uh, so far, uh, there are some some successful achievements. Um, you know, uh, it, as I mentioned, different mechanism, uh, size based mechanism. Uh, the lesser than ten nanometer size, fifteen nanometer size. I did not hear. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Which one mechanism you were saying that? Uh, I mentioned in in my presentation. Uh, one is like uh, the receptor mediated mechanism, actually. So uh, that way, you know, you can you can conjugate specific receptors like brain specific receptor like transferrin. Um, we also explored a folic uh, acid receptor specific uh, delivery. Um, so. there is a possibilities actually but apart from nanoparticles you can you can consider like nanotechnology as a whole to to treat a brain disorders there is a lot of nanotechnological approaches uh, uh, to treat uh, to brain diseases even i proposed uh, for my startup company um, certain certain nanotechnology based actually not like nanomaterials and nanoparticles using a nanotechnology you can you can you can you can explore you can target you can treat um, uh, or you can you can circumvent this blood brain barrier thanks a lot sir yeah anybody hello. else hello hello yeah hi sir good morning good morning sir yeah good morning uh, myself uh, vinoda speaking from uh, nizam college of pharmacy hyderabad Okay. and uh, see i have one question sir for uh, some herbal extraction purpose uh, can we use the silver nanoparticles sir i know a lot of lot of papers are uh, i saw in that way actually okay. um actually why they are using uh, i saw like lot of papers they explains about natural silver nanoparticles or something you know further you have to use silver nitrate as a, as a precursor right so uh, what is what is nano because you are you are reducing using some some kind of catalyst actually so herbal materials has lot of catalyst actually alkaloids you know lot lot of catalyst actually present so when you are introducing silver nitrate some of some materials will will reduce and it forms silver uh, silver nanoparticles like actually that's that's one of the conventional one and I don't know how far it's effective in therapeutic. Actually, uh, 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 to be frank, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't accept that that way. Actually, to to to, I don't even accept silver in in a therapeutic. Uh, maybe antibacterial something, but but still, um, maybe localized application would be okay. But but. Um, so what are the what are the problems that will raise uh, in that therapeutic? <laughs> so, uh, which means that you're you're, you're doing the, the project and. Uh, Uh, actually you know I, i cannot say about the problems actually it's it's it depends on your own interest um, and depends on uh, things but right. uh, out one question sir yeah hello sir yeah yeah i can i can hear you uh, sir, sir, i cannot I, can... i cannot say like it's a problem problems actually you can you can get a nanoparticle i'm sure about it 
but those nanoparticles uh, is not uh, only silver nanoparticle maybe it, it bonds with different alkaloids which is present in the, in the herbals um different you know uh, terpenoids m m many things actually so uh, the effect what you are getting uh, you cannot claim that it's only because of silver it, it because of many 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 things bound on on the surface of silver nanoparticles so that's not a problem actually but but you know i cannot say problems but Okay, sir. Especially, I'm uh, choosing for that uh, cancer purpose. So, uh, the silver nanoparticles are suitable for that uh, herbal extracted water. So, so that's why. I'm, uh, that if if silver uh, herbal extracted silver nanoparticles, if if they are treating cancer, means it's not because of silver. It's because of your herbal uh, constituents. Uh, you know, a lot of lot of. Uh, um, the 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 materials are present on, on and also nano when it becomes nano you know it becomes like a more active surfaces actually so in the active surfaces a lot of biomolecules and these macromolecules will bound so if it is treating cancer definitely is not because of your silver it's because of the, the some some herbal alkaloids or or something else mm. this is my conclusion I, I don't know maybe maybe different people has different suggestions but, but yeah because okay. silver is not like therapeutic <laughs> one actually. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Anybody Hello, else? Sir. You have? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. This is Doctor Munija. Hi, I'm Doctor Munija. Ah, uh, sir. Actually, can you suggest any career opportunities after PhD, sir? Recently, I finished my PhD from Kakatiya University. Okay. Uh, that's a more general question. Uh, as I suggested, um, uh, what's your what's your interest like, academic or industry, um, or do you want to go? in in uh, in other way like consultant no uh, sir actually i was interested i interested in research sir okay then 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 you can you can uh if you are interested in research um, um like uh, i feel like you want to do like a research or academic side something so you can you can find a postdoc um, i don't know area of research but uh, you can find a postdoc uh, Uh, my area of research is uh, GRDDS, sir, gastrointestinal tract delivery system. Okay, that that's a very nice uh, approach, actually. Um, yeah. So you can find a postdoc and um, uh, you can explore uh, this way, or maybe I, I would suggest to you uh, focus. Uh, don't go like exactly same like your PhD, but slightly, you know, slightly uh, deviate your research area in your postdocs. um then you explore different areas so so that you get a lot of ideas at 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 end of your phd and this is my suggestion actually so you can find a postdoc uh, i think the 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 sources i mentioned you know your access nature jobs and you also contact professors uh, from okay. universities e even even you try india also providing a lot of fellowships from uh, npd of national postdoc fellowships and uh, OPD of overseas postdoctoral fellowship, US PDF, you know. So you can, you can, you can, you can. If you bring your own money, you know, everyone will accept actually. So you can, you can explore it actually. And I, I don't know how many publications because nowadays it's completely saturated. Not like five years, ten years back. So you need, yeah. uh, you need, you need publications to prove yourself. Um, uh, I have fifteen publications, sir, up to now. Oh, that's good. Actually, I, I, I always. Uh, I'm sorry to say this. I, I'm not believing the numbers. Actually, I believe the quality of the publications. Uh, yeah, yeah. All are SCI indexed, sir. Uh, SCI, even again, I'm uh, maybe what what is the, what is the impact factor of publications and and something like this? Because I, I remember ten years back, we, we used to struggle to publish in European Journal of Chemistry. I think. I think Dr. Alaga Sami sir, he he knows very well. But nowadays, uh, people are publishing in 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 a Jacks, Anju, Angen, Wanti, Kemi, uh, just like that actually. So, because these days people are publishing like anything. So you must have a unique CV uh, to be accepted. Okay, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. You said that there are industrial PDFs also, no, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I know about that, sir? Uh, you can explore the websites of uh, AstraZeneca, Novartis. Uh, you know, there's some big, big companies actually. So you can you can explore those 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 companies. They 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 more often they used to uh, advertise uh, industrial postdocs. Um, so th that way you have to explore the even Bayer. Um, I worked some time in in Bayer actually. Bayer is, is situated in uh, everywhere in the world. So Bayer also offering some postdocs. 
So you can you can choose, you can you can select uh, the the, um, the the website. Otherwise, our Sundar Pichai will help you. You know, you can search through Google and you can just like you can put the keyword and you can you can search out. Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. You are very patient and answering all our questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. So, anybody else? Do you have any questions? So, now I am requesting our principal, sir, Dr. V. Alagar Sami, sir, to conclude these sessions. Principal, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, th uh, thank you, Dr. Saravanan. I think you have done your job. Uh, Dr. Murli have done the job excellently. Uh, all the uh, participants are very happy to attend this session. And about 3,000 uh, views were there in the uh, YouTube. I think it is one of the uh, great uh, uh, presentation that he has made in this big uh, uh, occasion. We also felt very happy to see these um, participations because when we started this uh, topic, we felt that um, many participants will be there uh, because this is of the research topic. It's not a common uh, topic. Uh, so we thought, but still we wanted to go uh, uh, presentations in a uh, different uh, topics so that, uh, you know, nowadays the students simply wanted to complete B pharmacy. So after B pharmacy wanted to go for GPAD. Uh, so uh, area they are very uh, concising. So they are not going in a, a different manner or exploring the unexplored things. So if we have such a lecture, so we thought it may open their eyes. So with that view only we have uh, approached you and really you have accepted our invitation without any hesitation. And all the participants felt very happy with your uh, patience presentation and uh, all the questions were answered because you are one of the uh, friend uh, for us. You have also become friend to all the 3,000 participants. So hope in the coming days, uh, Dr. Murali will associate with us and we'll have many more sessions uh, like this in the coming days. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Murali. Thank you. And uh, sparing you so all the time. I also thank all the participants and management for giving us this opportunity. So now I request uh, any one or two participants uh, uh, from other college, other than MNR College of Pharmacy, can say a few words. Uh, or one or two participants I request about this session. You can say sir, a few words. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, good, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. By one. I, I am Google. I am Google from JK and Raja College of Pharmacy, uh, Namakal Tamil Nadu, sir. Yeah. Tell me, sir. Uh, sir, uh, good good presentation, sir. Uh, Murli Kumar, uh, Murli Kumar Sami, sir. I would like to thank uh, very good, uh, uh, valuable information shared at this time of pandemic situation, sir. And would like, I would like to thank uh, MNR College of Pharmacy, uh, sir. I think I think just for information, Google, I, I'm, I'm going to present in your college also. Uh, Dr. Kapoor, sir, he invited me to give a talk. So uh, probably in, within two weeks' time, I'm going to present in your college also. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, I am waiting, sir, for your uh, kind of information and your speech, sir. Thank you so Local much. Locally, are in which course? Google. Google. Sir. Uh, you are studying which course? Sir, B form, sir. Okay, very good. Really, our uh, aim is uh, satisfied by seeing the participants like this because uh, the B form students come forward to attend this type of sense. So, that is our main motto to organize. So, really, very really felt happy. Any more uh, from different other states? Oh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. I think uh, this information uh, shared by. Uh, uh, you are uh, Professor uh, Dr. V. Alagar Sami, sir. I would like to thank, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. I am Navina from Balaji Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Varangal. Dr. Murali, sir, you are you gave such a good information and informative, fruitful session, sir. Thank you for uh, replying every question. Thank you for your patience, sir. Thank you so much. Success requires patience. So that, that's, I believe, a lot, actually. So... Thank you, sir. Good sir, afternoon, sir. Uh, this sir, is Dr. one request from uh, my, my, my side, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, kindly share this type of uh, webinars and uh, uh, seminars uh, to uh, our uh, following uh, registered male participants, sir. Kindly yep. share. 
definitely definitely google we will send that uh, next webinar details also to your uh, email id whoever is registered for this seminars and uh, okay, our our management as well as our principals are sir very enthusiastic and they are encouraging us to do more and more webinars so in the next coming week also in the next week also we are plan for an such two webinar from the eminent personalities from the uh, various part of the world that in the different countries as we are uh, conducting an international webinar series we are planning for an things so definitely we will send the invitation to your uh, registered email id so th there is no doubt we will send you okay sir thank you sir i think with this um, feedback we can close the session uh, so thank you very much as dr morali told the patience is the first thing uh, required for the success i do remember very well uh, about uh, seven uh, almost 10 years back dr morali was uh, searching for the higher positions after m pharmacy but that time he was very clear he wanted to do phd in abroad and he was to wants to do phd in a something new area not like m pharm chemistry he has completed he want to go do the m pharm pharmaceutical phd pharmaceutical chemistry he wanted to do phd in a some different area that is unexplored so that he can be entered in the new era so now i am uh, seeing him after 10 years he could uh, achieve what he wants so the patience listening and the constant efforts only make any man to become uh, reach any heights so that is understood uh, from dr morali so really we felt uh, proud of uh, you dr morali for having such association and uh, you are one of the inspiration to the all participants so definitely they will take your prayers and uh, they will come forward uh, in to enter into the new era of the science and uh, make our pharmacists uh, proud uh, in the scientific community so thank this you so thank much, a few words i thank dr morali for uh, sparing all the time and all the participants also so uh, in this occasion for his uh, valuable time spending uh, token of appreciation Uh, we would like to present a uh, certificate uh, for his uh, presentation i request dr saravanan to uh, uh, share the certificate sir yes sir i already shared in the screen sir i think hope you can able to see no it's yes, uh, not it sir not at all uh, not it sir just a minute sir we are working Sir, one more request, sir. Sir, sir, I think we shared, sir. I think in YouTube also it is coming, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, sir, Morley, sir, can you able to see? I couldn't see actually. Uh, you I'm couldn't, sure, sir. Can you stop your screen 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 yeah. sharing, sir? Yeah, I can see. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank sir, you. Now you. it has come uh, the certificate. Uh, some participant is uh, in doubt. I think uh, you can uh, display Dr. Morali's uh, email, sir, so that let them be in touch with uh, further communication. Uh, definitely, so, definitely, sir. Uh, Dr. Morali, sir, kindly accept uh, this uh, certificate as a token of uh, appreciation you, from our institution. Kindly so accept much, it, sir. and uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for a kind invitation. Um, uh, I'd like to extend some more things, some more words, actually. Uh, as you said, like. 10 years back you know when i completed pharmaceutical chemistry i was looking for higher positions i, I think as i remember uh, you, uh, uh, under the guidance of you, uh, you your guidance uh, we got some some positions actually i yes. I, i didn't join under you actually those times because i was looking for some different different disciplines i would like to explore um, uh, different uh, interdisciplinary things um, i remember that those occasions i, all, I also there is another uh, eminent professor uh, dr shanta arkat she also offered me a position uh, phd position but I, i didn't join in those those times uh, even she also appreciated me few years back uh, when i said like all this all this uh, completions all my experiences so i, I thank uh, dr saravanan for his for his kind invitation um, in the past 3 4 days uh, he was he was really really good in in communications uh, he was keep on asking uh, Uh, so he was he was motivating me you know to prepare the slides actually that that that's a very big thing because it, the, another thing you know i was preparing for a presentation for other other grant proposals uh, and and he was continuously asking me to to he was motivating me uh, to and um, and also he asked me like participants mostly they are students so please try to prepare like basics so that's the reason i prepare like some kind of basics actually 
So I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Saravanan for, 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 for this wonderful. He also my, my senior in CL Bade Method College of Pharmacy. So we work together. Um, I know him for the past uh, 15 years almost. Um, I also thank other organizers, uh, which as mentioned in, 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 the, in the pamphlet, uh, Dr. Bose, um, Dr. Jay Prakash, and last but not least, the, all the participants. Um, thank you, thank, thank you again. And thanks, Alaga Sami sir, thank you so much. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. I, other organizers uh, like uh, Dr. Subhas and the man behind in the screen, uh, Dr. Jay Prakash, who is our, like our IT department, he is working day and night. So really all we could uh, see because of his uh, tireless efforts in the day and night, daily he sleeps almost last two, three days um, up to morning, uh, three o'clock or four o'clock only. So really we thank uh, even the organizers, uh, Dr. Jay Prakash and uh, Dr. Subhas also, apart from uh, Dr. Saravanan. Thank you, Dr. Murali. So we'll be in touch in the coming days. Yes, sir. Also. Thank yes, you, sir. sir. We'll stay in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Yeah. Uh, thank you, all of you, for your uh, wonderful listening. And uh, on behalf of that management of uh, MNR College of Pharmacy, I thank uh, uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Murali for accepting our invitations and delivering a very wonderful session for us. And uh, I'm requesting all the participants to submit their uh, feedback form uh, which we had already mailed to you. If anybody is not getting that feedback link and that we are sharing in the screen, that you can give your valuable feedback. Once you give your valuable feedback, after that, definitely you will get on a certificates. As we had uh, received on a, uh, almost uh, around 2,000 registrations for sending on a certificates, it may take on a, a two days time. Actually, per day, we can be able to send only 100 certificates, but we are keeping on a, uh, some manpower and we are working together. So hence, we are uh, trying to send it within two or three days definitely you will get on a certificate in case if you have on a, any doubt regarding your certificates or any other things you can contact with us uh, the mail id what we get uh, mailed to you uh, hope uh, you people can understand and uh, when you are mailing please uh, mention your name email id and the college name clearly so that time only we can be able to <coughs> give you on a proper lip place um, so please uh, fill your feedback form and the feedback form will be opened up to six o'clock today evening after that we will close the feedback form so if you are not filling your feedback form you will not get on a certificates so feedback form filling is on a compulsory uh, then you will get your certificates yes thank you thank, one you, and all for, uh, thank you one and all for watching this uh, wonderful webinar uh, principal sir, can, you, sir. We, can we close sir can we end the meeting sir please unmute sir so please unmute yourself and uh, talk, sir. Uh, Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you Hello. all. Uh, we can... Hello. Ah, uh, yes. Sir, actually, I just want to know. Ah. Uh. Where will I get uh, your feedback form? Feedback form link we get displayed now. In the link in the screen, we get displayed the feedback link, and we get already sent this feedback form to your email ID, registered email ID. Along with you that confirmation link, we can all uh, in the uh, bottom we get kept on a feedback link. So that feedback link it was now activated. You can submit your feedback. Uh, you can sign up, sir, Dr. Saravanan sir. Ah, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Good. Thank you, sir.